In this clip, we're going to be learning about the interface and a little bit about project settings in Nuke. Now, there are really only three main parts of the interface for you to grasp at first. There's more than that, obviously, but if you just focus on these main three areas, it's really going to help you from feeling like there's just so much going on. How do I learn all of this? So I'm going to talk about those three areas and then just a little bit about what we do in each one. So let's go ahead and jump into Nuke. Okay, so here I just have a blank Nuke script script opened. Um, and you're going to probably notice that there's kind of these three main areas. There's the area here, the viewer. There's the area here, the node graph, and the property spin. These main three areas, you can do just about 90% of the stuff that you're going to be doing in Nuke, at least in the beginning. Now, I do have a timeline, obviously, and I do have um, this little kind of set of tools over here. But all of these tools can also be accessed through shortcuts here in the node graph. So really, if you just focus on the viewer, the node graph, and the property spin, you're going to be okay. Now, the viewer, obviously, this is where we're going to see our images. So when we start bringing in uh, different files, this is where we'll see them. To bring in those files, they're going to be in what's called read nodes, which is what we'll talk about in the next lesson, down here in the node graph. And this is where you build your tree, your composite, all of the different nodes coming together to create this one final image or video that you're making. So those are all going to live down here. And as you can see, I already have one node down here. It's my viewer node, and it just comes standard. Anytime you open up a Nuke script, you're going to have the viewer. Then over here is the property spin. Now you can think of the property spin kind of the way you think of After Effects um, project panel. But it's a little bit different in that it's not really a library of things. It's more like the effects and controls panel. Because anytime you have a node that has some sort of... Um, you know, settings. Let's say it's a, a transform node, which we'll learn about later, and we want to transform something in the Y axis. Here's where that type of thing would come up. Now, if I double click my viewer, it doesn't really have any properties, but it, if I did have some, it would come up over here. Now, one thing that I can also bring up over here that isn't necessarily based on a node is my project settings. So if I hover over here and I hit the S key, it's going to bring bring up those project settings for me. And this is basically where all of the magic is going to happen in the property spin. And the project settings is kind of the first place to start. So right now we have kind of some basic settings of a frame range, which that will change once we bring in a read node that has a real frame range. FPS of 24 is great, but right now my format is too big. You can see it's this 2K super, um, and that's really bigger than we're going to be working. Once we bring in our first read node uh, in the next clip, you'll notice that it's going to be 1920 by 1080, which is the size we'll be working at. Now, it's important to go ahead and set the size of your project because it's going to help Nuke to work a little bit faster by having that in place. And there's also a few nodes that get created throughout uh, the time that you're compositing that may be based on the project size. So like in After Effects, when you create a solid, there's a similar thing you can create in Nuke called a constant, which I'll go ahead and show you one of those right now, just to show you. I'll hit the tab key and type in constant. And then I hit the down arrow and hit enter. And so now I've created this little constant node and it says format means the root format, which means it referenced this format here. If I had left this the same that it was before, the constant would have come in at that size. Now this also brings up a way for you to be able to see some more things coming up in the property spin. Now, I could add more constants, maybe some color correct nodes, all kinds of stuff. And it can start to get a little bit overwhelming with all of the, you know, maybe too many panels over here. And so you can just come up and click this little button right here to remove all the panels. Or you can kind of do it one by one by hitting these X's in the corners. 
just kind of the same as little windows. So I'll go ahead and click the remove all and then it cleans it up nice and fresh for the next node that you open. This is also helpful if you have a bunch of nodes that are the same, like maybe you have a bunch of transform nodes and you don't, you only want to be working on one just so you don't accidentally grab the wrong one. You can clear that and then open the one that you do want to have. So that's a quick look at the three main parts of our interface. So remember we have the viewer here, the node graph, and the properties bin. And if you just focus on those here at the beginning, you're gonna learn Nuke in no time. So let's jump into our next clip where we're gonna learn about read nodes.